Hello again, DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey guys, just wanted to get back into our leadership conversation. Um, I, on our last video, we talked about leadership levels and we talked about um, there were five steps inside of those levels and we talked uh, about level one position leadership and we kind of left off with you know people working for you because they want to versus people working for you because they have to and now I want to talk a little bit about how do you create an, a culture an environment where people work for you because they want to well we will call this or this is called leadership by permission and leadership by permission is where there's communication going on between you and those that you lead and I'll tell you a little bit in a moment about that communication it's about connecting with people that you lead and it's about creating an environment where people understand that they are important to you you know um, I hear people many times many times you know quoting uh, I think it's Roosevelt's quote uh, people don't want to know how much you know until they know how much you care um, and I love the quote, but what I sometimes struggle with, that is, the quote is, is, is used more as, a, uh, as, a, as something to show you how smart I am, and it becomes just words versus having some legs with it. And it doesn't work that way. I mean, you, ha you can use all of the quotes and, and know all the quotes and be... A genius around leadership quotes and philosophies but at the end of the day if you're in a position of leadership it's gonna take a whole lot more than quotes to get people to line up with your vision and to get people to want to be a part of your team so let's go back to communicating how do you build a the right culture in an environment of permission well the first thing you have to do is that you have to get to know your team you have to personally take time out and meet and greet every single individual on your team. And if that's 10 people or if that's 100 people, if it's 200 people, you know, you should know who these individuals are. Their names, what's important to them, you know, what they do for the organization, and quite frankly, you know, what their vision is inside of that organization. And that's not going to happen by just you know, walking around, you know, with a notepad in your hand, you know, pointing at people and telling them what to do. You know, it's going to take one-on-one -on -one interaction. It's going to take time. It's going to take you valuing individual as an individual first and, and, and getting, again, to know what's important to them. Because, again, people don't want to know how much you know, right, until they know how much you care. So how do you, how do I know you care about me if all the interaction I have with you is direction, 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 direction. That doesn't sound like you care about me. That sounds like you need me to get your work done. That's not leadership by permission. You know, um, there's a great quote, and, and I truly, uh, again, love quotes. I love quotes, and you'll get to see that. But it goes like this. If you're the leader and nobody is following you, you're only taking a walk. And the thing about permission leadership is that people, again, will only follow you because they want to. A great example of permission leadership is, is someone who's doing volunteer work or working or leading inside of a volunteer organization. Because when you're inside of an volunteer organization and people are not getting paid to follow you or be influenced by you, then that's a true testament of your ability to inspire others and create a culture where people want to be a part of what you're doing. And so if you think about it, if you, what about this, even a better idea? If you are struggling around, how do I make this, take this next step? How do I go from a position leadership to permission leadership? Create this concept for yourself. Think in terms of everybody inside of your area of responsibility. So if you're run a store, or if you run a, a district of stores, if you run a warehouse, think of everybody inside of your organization as volunteers. And as volunteers, 
What would it take for you to get them to work for you? What would it take of you to get them to do it? How would you go about it? How would you embrace it? You follow me? Would you say thank you? Would you take time to explain expectations? Would you take time to coach? Would you take the time to encourage them? Would you take the time to get to know them? Would you have a laugh with them? Would you tell them a little bit about yourself? Would you be human with them? Would you talk about yourself? Your personal story? You know, what's important to you? What's your value system? How did you get to be where you are? But sharing and creating an environment where everybody feels involved, everybody feels appreciated, everybody feels needed and necessary. So if you take that same mindset into your workplace, because at the end of the day, although we, you are paying and individuals are getting paid on the job to do their jobs, they are still volunteers. And you may say, well, okay, Dale, how do you call that volunteers if they're getting paid? Well, people have a right to choose where they want to work. And people also choose who they want to work for. So in the sense that I can choose where I want to work, or maybe even better said, I can choose where I don't want to work. Therefore, there's a mindset that I want to be here or I don't want to be here. So as a leader, how are you influencing that? How are you getting them to want to be a part of your team? That How do you get them to feel like, you know what? You know, the extra mile. I want to go a little bit farther. T yes, 4 o'clock, and I'm, I'm, my, I, it's time for me to go home, but you know what? I, I'm going to stay to 5 o'clock. I'm going to stay to 5.30 because, you know, I want to see the job finished. I want to see it done. Or at the end of the day, my team needs me. My leader needs me. When you create an environment where people feel value, when you put people first, and they genuinely know you're putting them first, then you're creating an environment where people will give you permission to lead them. And that is a wonderful, wonderful feeling because you feel like you're a part of the team and the team feel like you're a part of who they are. And at that point, you're in a position to really start to deliver great results. But remember, in position, permission leadership, when you're in permission leadership, you cannot walk away from position leadership. You have to have them both because you're going to have people on the team that you're influencing because of your permission and you have people that on the team that may not be influenced so much from a, you're getting their permission to follow you because they don't know you well, so your position has to stay intact. You still have to keep your leadership integrity in place. So people still need to know that you're in charge. You still need to be able to, you know, make decisions and uh, validate, you know, work and make sure that um, the assignments and uh, what's necessary to get done is getting done, you know, hopefully at the highest level. But you still have to understand and still be okay with, you know, you're going to have to work a little bit harder in building those relationships and that if you build those relationships, then you put yourself in the very best position to be able to go to the next step, which is the production step, where people want to be a part of what you're doing because of success that's, that, that, that's, how you say that, the, the success that's associated with you and your business. So people want to work for your organization, whether you're Facebook or Google or, for that matter, Costco's or any place where people feel like, man, this is a successful organization and I want to be a part of it. But you don't get production until you get relationships. And you don't get relationships until you understand the importance of people first, profit follows. Okay? So as you begin to create that environment, you know, you know, a thank you is, doesn't cost a penny. You know, um, teaching and coaching you know, should be a highly valued asset of yours. Uh, being a visionary should be something that you, 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 you enjoy. Enjoying people. You don't have to lead to love, but you have to love to lead. 
So you have to enjoy people. If you don't enjoy people, uh, you're going to get stuck in position one, and that's where you're going to lie, and hopefully nobody upsets your apple cart because, you know, if something happens at that low-level position, you have no equity, and quite frankly, if things go bad, they can go really bad because you will find that you have no support under you. So, you know, position one is important. Or level one position leadership is important, but you need to be getting to two. And then as you continue to cultivate an environment or build a culture, I guess permission leadership is creating a culture of success. And once you get that culture, get that foundation set up, now you got everybody inspired. Now you got everybody motivated. Now your influence can resonate through the organization and you put yourself in the very best position now to start seeing results. Okay? So we'll talk more in our next conversation. There you have it. DFG. Now you know. Good Thanks, guys.